So, so this is for heating the hot water. Yeah, this is just for your hot water. Uh, so, and where does that come? That for the shower? For yeah. Instance? So this is for your shower, um, your kitchen sink, and obviously your bathroom sink as well. And do you happen to know how much? Does it heat it as it goes through it? Or it's a it... 10 litre hot water tank. Right. So what it is, once you've filled that tank up, it will heat, heat up that up. hot water. But if you imagine if you continually run the tap, eventually yeah. at some point, the hot water will run out and it will run cold. That's fine. When it runs cold, all you need to do is shut the tap off, leave it about 10, 15 minutes, and, and, it, and it will reheat back up for you. That's to say, for the, for the boiler, if you want to run it on gas, you need to remove the cover. So if you want to run it on electric, Yes, it's fine. Yeah, so with electric, that. you can leave your cover on. You'll only do that on mains, obviously. Yeah, only on the mains electric. But then obviously, if you want to light the gas up, you will have to remove remove the cover because it will not light on the gas with the cover on. It so there's that safety feature on it. Yeah, yeah. So, next one down, we've then got your 240, so your yeah. main electrical hookup. Yeah. Then also in the top here, we've got an external satellite feed. So if on the site where you are, if they have either a satellite feed or a TV feed on the post, yes. you can run a cable from the post into here and I'll show you where it comes out inside the van. It's a slightly non-standard fit in those and it's not like this, a, a television area. No, fitting. at the minute that's the satellite one on there, but right. you can buy, we sell them in the shop, it's a little screw on attachment and you can change that from a satellite feed to an aerial feed. So you can But in run. theory you shouldn't need that because... Uh, unless you're on yeah on an aerial that's, that's yeah I mean there's some sites especially some in uh, mid Wales where the the TV yeah. reception is really poor yeah. so what it is is the site will have, have a huge a, big mast yeah. and then you'll have a TV point on your post and then you need to, you need to plug it in here. yeah so you'll need the cable obviously to run from the post to your van but then what this saves is rather than putting a cable up through your window yeah, yeah. It's already wired in and it comes out inside yeah, the van. Yeah, I see that. that that's useful. Yeah. yeah okay, so, so satellite or TV, yeah, as long as you've got the. Yeah, the we fitting. sell them in the shop. All it is is yeah. the little screw on attachment. You'll notice on the other end is exactly the same as a TVA, yeah. and you can just plug your lead in. Then below, we've of course got the isolator key for your motor mover. Right. But I'll give you a demonstration in the motor mover after once Great. we finish the demonstration. Excellent. And then obviously, your. Sorry, there's a compressor at the back for the two workshops either side, so I'll pause every time it does. Um, obviously, I'll fit your brand new leisure battery inside here. Are you happy how the 12 volt system and the 240 system works inside the van? Generally speaking, as long as you show me all the switches. Yeah, yeah so, so all it is is virtually make, most of the power comes through your 12 volt battery, but then obviously your 240s recharging up the 12 volt as you go along. Indeed. So you've got a continual cycle of, of power for the van. There's no fixing strap in there, does it not need it? Um, on this style, what it is is the battery goes inside the bag, and then there is a fitting here, and then right. what it is, it clamps in so it fits it. Fits, oh, that's fixes it easier in. to do. Yeah, that. but I will fit the battery and I'll lock it in place yeah, for you. So by the end of the demonstration, it'll be in and ready to go for. And, yeah. and as far as locking that, how does it lock? It, don't bother showing me now. It's just got keys on the top corner. Yeah, yeah. It literally it pushes up. It will click in place, and then you literally just lock, lock the it. cupboard, lock it afterwards. So moving on down, then obviously you've got your fridge vents, and obviously your motor mover on the bottom there. Moving so on. Tire pressures, um, Owen. The mine are always written on here. They're yeah, they're on just by the door. There's a right. little plaque just on Fine. the side, so I'll show you that when we get round. Because they're probably up about fifty on it. Wait, so that's yeah. obviously where my bucket is and toilet. Have you had a flush tank before in your toilet, sir? Uh, I've had a flush, but it, but it's um, a cassette. Yeah. 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 Bear with me. Let but me but not a flush tank. Yes. No, it came off the ma it came off my main. Water. Yeah, so what this is, this has got a separate tank. Yeah, I know. Um, James did tell me this, and I've not seen this before. Yeah. So rather than using up your lovely Aperol, which you'll need, this holds its own tank. So in the top here, yeah. it holds about five or six liters right. inside here, which is loads. Presumably. You will need. Yeah, it's a long. I mean, if you were away for say two weeks, you could probably fill it up with six liters, and it would last you the two weeks. Yeah. Well, obviously, if you're only away, say, for a weekend, I'd probably only put a litre or two litres yeah. inside there. It all depends on how much you're going to use your toilet. Some people use the toilets a lot, where other people, if they're on a site and the toilets are two metres yeah, away, they'll use the on-site ones. Or a good tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, inside, you will need um, a watering can, or I carry a, a big plastic bottle, something that is easier to tip it in there, because obviously trying to pick up an Aperol and tip it in is, is quite tricky. And... 
Okay, you're going to tell me. What do you put in there? Just water? It's the, the pink solution that you put in the top. You can right. just use water, but what it is with the pink solution as well, it adds a nice smell to the toilet when you're flushing it, so it keeps it all, all nice and fresh for you. So, when it's full up, yeah. you just know it's full up because it comes to there? Yeah, yeah, you can fill and it And then it's got, how, do, you, do you know how much it says in the handbook, how much there is in there? Did you say how many it, It's about five to six litres it is. And there's a certain amount of this pink stuff you put in for Yeah, that. yeah, if you read on the, on the bottles, they're all slightly different, but it'll give you a rough guide on it. I mean, it isn't an exact science. It's all it is is a nice smelling fragrance. So when you flush your toilet, it adds a nice smell to it. And what about draining it in the winter? I'll show you that now. So flush tank on the top, and then obviously below, you'll be used to this. Is your lovely toilet? Oh, setting. I see. Yeah. So slightly different than yeah. mine. On That's these ones now, it's the new trolley dolly ones. Oh, so no more brilliant. carrying it. You can take yeah, it off to the very toilet. Very good. Yeah. Wouldn't recommend taking it through an airport though. You'll probably no. get some funny looks. You would. Then for draining it off. Really nice and simple now. They put a little plastic case in there, and there's your pipe. Right. And so you just... all you need to do is just pull that bung out of the end, and it will drain down all the contents of this tank out for you. Right. Fine. That's why I tend to use a plastic bottle, because what I do is drain mine back off into the bottle, and then I just put the bottle back in my gas locker. So then when I next go away, all I've got to do is get the bottle out, and I can just tip it straight back in. Right. So rather than wasting it, there's no point tipping it down the drain as such. You can just you can just reuse it. And it's still top. pink. Yeah, 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 it's that stays glass. So there's nothing else in there, that's no, straight in. That's it, and then all it is is you just push it in and it's just the bottom of the handle that locks it. Just in locks it. Yeah, that's it, as simple as that. And there's the same locking system. Yeah, exactly, uh, they're exactly yeah. the same. So all it is is obviously lock pushed in there, make sure it's clicked, and then all you do is key in, turn, and then what it does, it locks the button so no one can press the button in. Okay. Thanks. So, move on round. So obviously your two rear legs, both on the back end of the van, and fingers crossed that's your number plate. It is. Perfect. Yep, they're fine. So there's only, as far as the waste water from the shower and everything. Yeah, it's just through the two outlets there. So the one outlet does the kitchen sink, and the rear one does your shower and obviously your bathroom sink as well. Right. I think they're the same size pipe as mine, the bigger ones. Uh, yeah, they're, they're normally James, they all were, relatively standard. So uh, yeah, I think we should check that it. because I might, if not, there could be problems. Uh, well, it won't be a problem, I'll just get some more. Yeah. <laughs> so, for your door, I will show you, it has got the catch. So, when it's locked yeah. back, it, yeah. you do need to pull the handle to release it. So, if you do have any guests round, especially if you've had a few glasses of vino, don't try. Just, just make yeah. sure you show them that because we do replace quite a few from where people are quite forceful with it. Do break they, in here? They will snap off the back there. And then obviously you've also got the barn style split door yep, as well yep, for you very as well. Nice, yep. So moving on down, you said about the tyres. Again, they put it all on the door here so Fine. it's nice and easy. So it's 58 psi per tyre. Also for the wheel nuts is 115 newton meters. Now it's not written on here, but it is inside the handbook. I've left the handbook out to show you which page it's on. Um, for the wheel nuts, they've been checked in the PVI. I'll do them again for you today. But then obviously from today onwards it's down to yourself to be checking. How a PDI? What about a service, Owen? Yeah, it all gets done inside the PDI. So, so that gets signed off for an annual service? Yeah, so, yeah, so it's all, it, it, it really it is a service. They just call it a PDI yeah. because it's before, it's a pre-inspection um, delivery. Yeah, that's fine. Or pre-delivery inspection, should I say. Um, yeah, so for the wheel nuts, as I say, I'll do them today. But then today forwards it's down to yourself. If you've got a torque wrench, fantastic. If not... Just use your wheel wrench that's in the front. The main thing is just making sure that your wheel nuts are tight. And I guess that, that if they're done up to 110 psi, they're quite difficult to do with just an ordinary. Uh, they will wheel come. It's, yeah, it's, they're not overly they're not. tight, okay. but it's, it, they're tight enough down. if you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So, last but not least, is obviously your front cupboard. So, you've got your lovely wet locker in the front here. So, it's yeah. ideal for 